Now, one of the things that makes this intriguing to me is the fact that it, it, you don't have a traditional seat or saddle oh, yeah. on yeah. this, that. Instead, what, as I understand it, what you do is you're standing actually on a platform. Uh, you're sort of leaning back. And yeah. if it looks like you have the ability to sort of straddle maybe kind of a short, stubby seat yeah. or whatever, yeah. uh, or, sa or saddle or whatever you'd like to call yeah. it. But mainly it's all about standing there, right? Uh, yeah, well, it's part of the, one of the patterns we have is that the, the way uh, the springs uh, and the way we get the stability, whatever the configuration of the road, uh, which is actionated by two springs on the axis, basically is, is being uh, pushed by the, the feet. Okay. But the seat also follows the movement, and it's a kind of bucket seat, but only for your butt and the lumbar rest. Right, right. And that follows the movement, and it's being taken with springs that follows the movement with the angle. So it's rather sophisticated, but there is also a kind of saddle for the guys uh, to have a, a better uh, support and a more sporty drive if they want. But okay. you can also sit on this vehicle if you want to. Oh, okay. All right. So you can, you can choose the position you want. But um, I, I, the, the, when we were testing the vehicle in San Marino in Italy, and it's uh, very hilly, etc., uh, the, the younger engineers would like to have a very sporty drive and lean uh, close to the ground, right, right, things right. like that, while I would like to have a very stiff uh, and my spring, springs very tied up to have a very vertical uh, drive and experience all the comfort of enjoying uh, the environment and right. enjoying the, the driving in, in nature, basically. So it's very flexible and adaptable to whatever your needs. As long as you're fit, I'm not saying this vehicle is designed for disabled persons. It has not that purpose. Unfortunately, we cannot do it all, but it covers basically ergonomics from age 6 to 77 as long as you're fit. I have a friend who happens to be 80 who tested the vehicle a few years ago and he was really fine with it. Yeah, okay. The worst case scenario if you're not really good because you have to understand that the front is swinging with, with the springs, it will take you maximum 15 minutes to learn the process and have a feeling if you don't drive fast, you will do it very fine in no time. Right, okay, very cool. So now, so you've got the, you've got the main rider, I guess is the better, or driver in this case. Um, then you've got, as I understand it, then behind them, the straddle or somewhat between the two rear wheels, you have yeah. the ability then to add everything from golf cart carriers yeah. to uh, a bench, in a sense, for a family to sit on. I want to show you this at a confidential basis. Okay. These are the latest cases we are working on. Okay, all right, got it. And uh, we have seven different cases we can use with different colors to basically protect. The major issue you have with this type of vehicle is, is stealing. So you want to secure all your belongings on that. So it's right. a very versatile vehicle where you can put seats, you can payload capacity, platforms, extension of platforms. So it's basically everything you want. But basically the two arms in the rear protect the rear passengers from lateral accidents which you don't have with a bicycle with a scooter or any other two wheeler. Uh, yeah, right, right. So basically, in case of lateral impacts, the cage will protect you. Of course, if you're against the wall, there's nothing we can do. Right. Uh, it will be an accident. Yeah. But otherwise, you're going to be laterally pushed and protected, which is not the case of a bike. Right, right. Some people um, in the traffic regulation will argue that you can inject yourself from it. This is highly theoretical. Okay. Or people think they can inject themselves from a, a, a critical situation. I happen to be a biker too. I wonder how and when I will be able to eject myself. Uh, it will, it's the, the best case scenario of an accident is when you have the time to eject yourself from a critical situation. Right. Well, I don't. I mean, that doesn't happen with a bicycle. You know, you got one way on a bicycle, and that's over the handlebars. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, so. Let's talk about some of the materials that go in, in into this. Then you, we were talking about that it, that you've got it. It's, it's a, a very light frame, comparatively speaking. So talk about the sort of how you selected the materials and how you used them. Yeah. Um, well, the, 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 there were three different options. Um, one was aluminium, steel, and of course composite like of uh, uh, carbon fiber and things right. like that. So, right. Um, we were puzzled between aluminium and steel for quite a, a long time, and then I decided we would go for steel. Aluminium, in our case, um, is not the right solution because we have an open frame. It's not a closed frame like a bike or a, 
uh, a VTT bike or a sport bike could be. Right. So it, it needs to be steel because it's flexible, it's stronger. Some people may argue it's going to be heavier. I'm not convinced of that at all. For having worked with closely to the uh, steel industry, and uh, I have seen uh, chassis for cars made in aluminium and steel, and they turn out to be the same weight. Yeah. While steel is much more performing and cheaper. And as we are targeting, and the idea is to reverse the process of cheap imports, is to export. Well, people in Africa will love to fix their bike themselves. In aluminium, you cannot do that. And for example, if you deal with uh, many bikes and aluminium with electric bikes in Holland, for example, enclose their batteries into the steel frame. If you have a failure of battery, you have to basically destroy your frame to reach your, your cells. Get to the right. yeah. uh, destroying it and fixing and putting new cells fine, but I wonder how you're going to fix your frame afterwards. Yeah. Not obvious at all. So we like steel for that purpose. Cheap, very strong, but much more flexible much more responding in terms of efforts and comfort. Right. I, in fact, I just read, I don't know if you saw this or not, but there is a uh, apparently uh, some a new steel alloy that was developed in South Korea that uh, supposedly is is really quite strong and quite lightweight and they're apparently hoping to uh, up, you know begin to develop that for specifically for use uh, in the uh, the bicycle industry. I haven't heard about that because uh, uh, lately I focused on battery technology and I heard that there are some new batteries out there that are very, very interesting that are ceramic based. They would be cheaper, lighter and faster to reload. And that's the beauty of our, our scooter is that basically it's light electric vehicles and there's lots of progress made in for light vehicles while for the car it's going to be taken another while before it hits the market and be really competitive. Right. Well, let's let's talk about the electric side of this then. As I understand it, what you have is you have uh, your electric traction motors, hub motors, I assume, on yes. the two rear wheels. Um, so maybe explain how you have this yeah. set up. Uh, well, we have three wheels, and basically the first vehicle in the in the range is is a vehicle which we call the Junior today. The name will change when we hit the hit the market for good. Okay. But basically, it's a vehicle that will have only one front engine with maximum 500 watts, uh, okay. like a, a like an, an electric bicycle, but a very light version. Okay. One pack battery will give too much autonomy for that age because it's accessible from kids from age six to ten. Okay. You don't want them to take a GPS; they will go to the Bahamas with their own luggage. You will never see them again. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be cautious with that. But nevertheless, it's going to be one front little engine with one pack battery for the first vehicle. Right. The second vehicle, which is destined for mostly teenagers and let's say women, one meter fifty to one meter seventy-two, which is about uh, let me say three foot, which is like five foot okay. to five seven, and that vehicle has one front engine also okay. on it. But it could have four packs of batteries of 20 amp in oh, terms okay. of tuning. And uh, the next one has two real engines. The next one has two real engines. And the last one has three engines. Ah, okay. That's the one that the young guys like to tool on, right? <laughs> well, uh, they like to tool on all of them. It's not a question. Um, the, the first one will go maximum nine miles per hour. Okay. And we have a parental key. Right. Set the parents can set up because nine miles per hour at age six is much too fast. Yeah, no, that's a fair. It's a fairly good speed because I'm riding along that's my bike fast. at fifteen. Six 12 years old, they, it's too fast. Yeah. Um, I think kids physiologically uh, control their three-dimensional space only around ten and eleven, age twelve. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, uh, fully. Uh, they are aware of what's happening. Be before that, they don't have a notion of speed and it's still uh, long, uh, it needs to be cautious. Right. So not everyone is at the same level uh, in, in age and experience with that. So right. you need to be very, uh, very uh, cautious with that. But otherwise, the two other vehicles will be limited at speeds up to 20 miles per, miles per hour, okay. which is fast enough for an EV vehicles, uh, neighboring electric vehicles, fast commuting, 45 is really fast. Right, it's yes. Fast. Now, the other ones, and most of the five vehicles are basically foldable and folding and dismountable for okay. obvious and practical reasons uh, for sanding 
uh, change supply, etc., and also for taking your vehicle on vacation. So you can leave your camping car under the, 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 the trees and you have your tool to do sport and, um, and right. fishing and uh, shopping, etc. Right. But the, the, the Rhino today is the only one, once assembled, is not foldable and not dismounted. Okay. And that's more of a for cargo Rugged, and commercial. Vertical market uh, tool that can be used for shopping, advertising, everything you name it. Right. It's a very strong one. And the last one is an explorer, more destined for family, leisure, and for yachting, of course. When you arrive somewhere, you have a tool to discover, bring the food back to the boat, etc. Right. It's really a family tool. Okay. But it will go 50 miles per hour. That's, 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 that's really fast. fast. <laughs> yeah. Now, the beauty of the system in terms of uh, electronics is that we will de design the system that the system is designed in such a matter that we can dim down the speed to whatever local traffic regulation right. imposed by a state or a municipality or whatever right. to make it compliant or avoid the helmet, the insurance and the tag. Right. Well, let's talk about some of the regulatory aspects of, of, of this then. Obviously, the 20 mile, the fact that it's a tricycle, um, there, are no pe there are no pedals involved, right? So no. you're not going to pedal it. So I'm thinking in terms of, of U.S., uh, this would not qualify as a low-speed electric... Well, uh, the U.S. is very, uh, how would I say, uh, easy regarding the, the regulation of the traffic. Um, on, on, on that perception. Um, if we want, we can put our vehicles without any certification on the roads, which is most what people do. But nevertheless, um, for the US DOT, our vehicle at speed up to 50 miles per hour are considered as a motorcycle. Okay. Dot. okay. Now, the US is very free in that respect, but when you have a liability issue, it's up to you to prove that you did your due diligence and all your research right. and your quality control inside the company to prove you have uh, outsourced the trustability of all your components right. and exactly what you're doing. Why the European regulation, uh, the US uh, certification and homologation as they call it, is much more demanding and much more... Um, hard to integrate from the beginning on, which I like, because it obliges you to integrate the, the, the highest specs and the functional and technical specs from the beginning on in the design, knowing that the rest will follow naturally. Right. This so, is why we are basically now uh, partnership, uh, partnering with a company that is uh, Minnesota-based, or engineers who are going to pass and do um, materialize the last, the last five vehicles for U EU certification and U.S. DOT because we want to reach that. Okay, so you are planning then to have make this available in, in, in the North American market. Yes. But I'm guessing that, that the original design for this and you were thinking primarily the European market, is that correct? Mm -hmm.